The iPhone 10, Apple's flagship phone of 2017. Some people love it, some people hate it. However, if you're still on the fence, hopefully this video helps you pick a side. Hey guys, it's Tech Confusion, and today we're going to be taking a look at both the upsides and downsides to the iPhone 10. So the first thing you'll notice about the iPhone 10 is the design change of the body. The glass back, vertical camera, stainless steel side, and the edge-to-edge -edge display all come together to make this new iPhone. I can't express how beautiful the iPhone X's display actually is. This is the first time we've seen a huge design and spec bump change in a while. I'm a big fan of the edge-to-edge -edge display. It's awesome having such a large screen while keeping a small footprint. And while there's a lot of hate going around about the notch, I personally don't mind it, and most of the time I forget it's there. The screen is a 5.8 inch OLED display and has a resolution of 2436 by 1125. Apple finally switched to OLED from its dated LCD technology, which means we see better contrast and colors whether you're watching a movie or just browsing the web. In my opinion, the iPhone X's display is one of the best on the market today. So turn the device around and you'll see another huge design change. The all glass back looks very nice and allows for wireless charging something we've been waiting for for a very long time. However, because of this new design, you'll have another surface to protect from scratches and cracks, so you'll probably want to pick up a case or skin. After about two months of use, the back of my iPhone has a couple of hardly visible scuff marks. The stainless steel border looks awesome, however, it's more susceptible to scratches than the previous aluminum design. So just another thing to keep in mind. In the past, Apple has been good about improving their cameras with each release, and this hasn't changed on the iPhone X. On the back, we have the dual 12 megapixel cameras, one wide angle, and one telephoto. The dual cameras enable portrait mode, which was introduced to us on the iPhone 7 Plus. I find myself using this mode all the time, just because it's a closer match to what you'd get from a DSLR. The iPhone X's cameras are identical to the iPhone 8 Plus's cameras, with the exception of the optically stabilized telephoto lens on the iPhone X. This means when you're taking a video and you zoom in, it will be a lot more stable than previous versions. All of the new iPhones released this year are capable of shooting 4K at 60 frames per second, and they're actually the first smartphones to be able to achieve this. I'm super impressed with how amazing videos and photos look from the iPhone X. Colors are accurate and the dynamic range is fantastic. Another huge addition to the iPhone X was the true depth front facing camera. All of the most advanced technology lives in this top notch area. There are various sensors that project 30,000 infrared dots on your face to determine whether or not it's you. This is what Apple calls Face ID. When I first heard they replaced Touch ID with Face ID, I was a bit skeptical, but after testing Face ID and putting it through various scenarios, I'm really impressed with how fast it is. You almost don't even realize that your phone is locked because it's so fast. It works 95% of the time, with the 5% failure being very harsh lighting scenarios or my face being too close to the camera. It works with sunglasses, hats, and hoodies, and while I have not tried to trick Face ID, many people have and failed. With this new depth sensing technology, we have portrait mode on the front facing camera for the very first time. Sometimes it has some trouble recognizing edges, so hopefully we see some improvements from updates in the near future. The camera also has this new feature where you can change or fake lighting effects, either while taking a picture or after while editing. It's pretty crazy the results you can get. You can add contour light, or you can make yourself look like you're sitting in a studio. Face ID is not just a feature to unlock your iPhone, but essentially it takes over Touch ID's functions. So that means you can purchase apps and utilize Apple Pay, all with just a single glance. Possibly my most favorite Face ID integration is with auto-filling passwords. When logging onto a site or an app, a little Face ID animation will pop up for half of a second and then your username and password are instantly filled in. This is so nice because not only is it hard to remember passwords, but no one wants to type their email in every time they log in. So yes, this new Face ID technology is great and all, but what's better are the new Animojis. Well, in all seriousness, these new animated emojis make use of the new depth sensing technology to track your face and apply movements to an emoji. Sounds great, right? Well, in my opinion, it's fun to mess around with, but it shouldn't be your only reason to purchase the iPhone X. So obviously with an edge-to-edge -edge screen design, you're going to be losing any buttons that were once on the front of the device. In this case, it was the home button, a feature that has been passed down since the very first iPhone. 
While rumors have it Apple tried to put the button under the display, in the end they settled for a series of gestures that replaces the button's functionality. If you're in an app and you'd like to go back to the home screen, a simple swipe up from the bottom will take you there. If you'd like to open multitasking, it's a swipe up and hold. At first, learning these gestures and making them a habit was tough. However, after a day or two of using the device, the movement seemed natural to me. When it comes to performance, the iPhone 10 packs the new A11 Bionic chip, which is one of the most powerful smartphone processors ever made so far. Overall, navigation of the iPhone 10 feels snappy and quick, but where the real performance shines is when performing heavy tasks like gaming, rendering a video, or messing around with augmented reality. I ran the iPhone through a Geekbench test, and the results were almost unbelievable. Coming in at nearly 10,000 for multi-core score is crazy, considering the 13-inch MacBook Pro only ranks slightly higher. If you're looking for a powerful phone, look no further. Apple has really beefed up the performance of their new iPhones. With the addition of the new face recognition and OLED display, battery life is typically one of the biggest things to take the hit. However, battery life on the iPhone X is decent. With medium to heavy use, I can last a full day, about 12 hours, and with light use, I was able to get two and a half days. While those numbers work for me, some people use their phone a lot more than I do, so it'd be nice to see an increase in battery life on future generations. The biggest downside of the iPhone X has to be the price. For $1,000, you're getting a great phone. However, it's really hard to justify spending so much. If you're constantly on your phone and you're looking to purchase a solid smartphone that will last you for several years, then you'll love the iPhone X. It's worth every penny. However, not everyone can afford such a high-priced phone. Overall, I'd have to say the iPhone X is Apple's best smartphone yet. It's the one we've all been waiting for, just at an extremely high price. I really like the direction the iPhone line is heading, and hopefully we'll see more and more improvements in years to come. The iPhone X is definitely not for everyone, but for those of you who are interested, I'm sure you'll love it. It's a fast, durable, and all-around fantastic device. So has this video helped you make a decision? Let me know in the comments if you're going to purchase the iPhone 10, and if not, what will your next phone be? Anyways guys, that's all for this video. If you enjoyed, please remember to leave a like, and don't forget to comment and subscribe. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and until next time guys, peace out.